Hello, minions! Hello, we enthusiasts! Welcome to the Flash series on our channel, We Enthuse. So today is session number one, all about fluid mechanics, where we are going to start up our discussion on hydrostatic pressure, and then we are going to discuss the different instruments like barometer and manometer. So, first concept that is going to come up is pressure but not this kind of pressure that most of you have dealt in the past few weeks when you are writing your term exams or prelims that probably you are going to write. So we are going to discuss all about pressure and if you have ever gone scuba diving like the one you can see on your screen or probably snorkeling or just underwater swimming then you would have definitely experienced this kind of pressure and the other way around if you have been on very very tall mountains and especially the, all the people from Jammu Kashmir probably can vouch for this if you go to very very high altitudes then your nose starts bleeding and that's what we are going to discuss we are going to discuss all the concepts today and there are some amazing problems along with a very good homework question that I'm going to give you by the end of the session. So welcome aboard. This is Shreyas here, your master teacher for physics at Vedantu and I'm going live. So welcome minions, welcome we enthusiasts. I hope you are doing fabulous. I hope you are doing great and what an amazing performance you guys showed in the previous mentee and in case you haven't watched the mentee or couldn't participate for some or the other reason do watch it do check it out amazing questions a lot of fun which we had on Sunday now I'll be telling you about this week's schedule and this week's mentee as well in a bit but before that let me quickly introduce uh, so guys this is Shreyas here and I'm the physics master teacher at Vedantu and I anchor this channel as well as I take a lot of batches and micro courses in Vedantu. So if you have downloaded the Vedantu app or if you are already a registered user at Vedantu then probably there's a good chance that you would have seen me in some or the other micro course or in some other other long term batches. Alright and if you want to get in touch with me and you want to ask some amazing questions or probably you have some doubt on how to study or something like that. So definitely please do that. You can drop in at Shreyas underscore Vedantu. That's my Instagram handle. And I post in a lot of videos. I'm not sure how many of you saw today's video. If you have seen today's video, just post it up in the chat box. I'll be reading all your comments. So today's video was about why do we use three pin plugs? Very interesting concept. So I hope everyone is doing good. Hello, Bhanu Prakash, Jumna, Science Priya, Sneha, Prince, Hasni, Ankit, 17S. Uh, Ranjit, Bhanu Prakash, Saurabh, Hasini and Rohan, welcome, welcome, welcome aboard, welcome Kirito, welcome everyone. So let me also tell you in case you are a new user out here and you want to become the member of our family then just go hit the subscribe button out there, it will be down there. So once you hit the subscribe button, you will be getting all the important updates, all the important news and notification which is important for cracking the examination. Be it boards, be it J, be it bits, be it CET, all the important updates and the lecture series will come up here. So do not forget to hit the subscribe button and me, Shimon sir and Vazim sir are your YouTube anchors for this channel. Remember that. And let me also tell you, if you are already here and subscribed, do not forget today's lecture fees are your like out here so go and smash that like button out there so that's your lecture fees for today's session or today's video all right so let's get going hello asmi hello ensai hello sorrow welcome aboard welcome shivam welcome aishwarya welcome saurabh so let's get going so this week's schedule goes something like this like I said before, the first half of the week generally is going to be 11th standard syllabus. So it's open for 11th, 12th as well as droppers. We are going to complete entire fluid mechanics in detail. So we are going to do uh, pressure and the instruments today. Tomorrow we are going to do flotation and those kind of problems. And on Wednesday we will do Bernoulli's principle, equation of continuity and hydrodynamics related problems. On Thursday and Friday, I'm going to start with capacitors. The next week I'll be doing magnetism, but 
capacitors is going to take some time so I'm just dividing the capacitors chapter into two weeks so the first two days I'm going to start with capacitor the types how to combine capacitors and different interesting and unique problems to capacitors and Saturday there will be a special lecture you can keep guessing or you can put it up in the comment box on what that lecture is going to be and some more amazing elements that are going to come up this week I'll tell you the details as and when we progress and this week's mentee is going to be on Thursday uh, actually this should have been uh, 11 o'clock but I'm not sure why it's written tell I'll confirm you the timings soon but the topic is going to be current electricity guys that's very important so the timing will be confirmed very soon but the topic is going to be current electricity in case you have missed any other classes please go ahead check out the playlist all the lectures are neatly maintained in those playlists so check out that playlist guys that's very important all right so let's do something very interesting don't worry we are going to do a lot of interesting stuff on uh, Saturday as well as a lot of learning that is going to happen throughout the week uh, fluids dynamics fluid uh, statics capacitors a lot of stuff is coming up so guys do not miss any of the classes do not miss any menti quizzes and if you miss also but for unavoidable circumstances please watch the replay all right so let's get going guys I hope the Josh is high are my minions high on Josh let me know in the chat box guys We'll let you know Uncharted, don't worry. Yes, yes Ankit, I'll conduct that as well very soon. Yes, Aishwarya, the rigid body mechanics chapter is complete. We'll be doing more sessions as well on rigid body mechanics. I'll be doing some problem solving sessions, etc. Don't worry. Let me just cover up the mains part first and then I'll co cover, come to the advanced part as well. All right, let's do that. Let's get going. Okay, so first of all, first of all, let me tell you what pressure is and then I'll give you a very simple question. Now it's very important to understand this and I'm going to give you some small trick as well over here. Now imagine that there is a container okay like this and there is some gas or some liquid inside it. Let's say there is some kind of a fluid. Now a fluid means either a gas or a liquid then it will exert force on all the faces of the container it will exert force on all the faces of the container that force is because of the pressure and that force divided by area is called as the pressure itself so there are different units of pressure the SI unit of pressure is nothing but called as Pascal and one Pascal is one Newton applied on one meter square of area so that is the SI unit there are other units you would have learned that in chemistry like ATM and other things like one ATM is almost like 1.01 etc into 10 to the power uh, you know 5 pascals which is also like 76 centimeters of Hg and other units like bar tor so many units are there but I'm pretty sure you can get that in the books that's not so important you should know some basic units that's enough now what is important from physics perspective units and all that you would have studied that in chemistry now what is important from physics perspective let me tell you that okay now this part must be clear for all of you so here is the thing guys if I take any area let's say this is some area okay and there is some gas or some fluid over here that fluid will always exert force perpendicular to the area remember that so that force due to the pressure is always perpendicular to the area and that force is given by P into the area itself so very very important so doesn't matter how that area is oriented a fluid which is there on one side of any surface with when it exerts force that force is always perpendicular to the area no matter how that area is oriented keep this in mind it will be of lot of use in the next class as well okay so very very important okay so having said that let's do a simple question let's see how many of you get this uh, but before that let me give you a very practical application where pressure uh, the concept of pressure is very very important like for example if you take a nail and you hit it with the hammer it easily pierces 
or maybe there is just a nail or you just happen to touch your finger on that nail you would have felt a lot of pain or you would have probably started bleeding because a lot of force gets concentrated on small area so when a large force gets concentrated on a small area what happens the pressure increases and it can tear apart your skin's layers or your muscles and that's why you know you will bleed so large force on a small area is going to be obviously a large value of pressure but when there are lot of nails then you can easily lie down because even though you are lying down on a nail there are many nails below you so understand the total area increases your total weight has been distributed over a large area so the pressure overall reduces and that's why nothing happens and you won't bleed i hope this is clear i hope this is clear are hsr welcome 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 yes understood guys so force was pressure into area or pressure is force by area so when the same force is divided on a large area the pressure will obviously go down so this is how this can be explained and a lot of people feel that there is some kala jadoo or some black magic out here but nothing like that it's a simple concept of physics so if somebody has done this and told you this is black magic please don't believe them all right all right so let's get going guys let's get going and here comes your next question um uh, okay here comes the next question on your screen here it is uh the atmospheric pressure is 1 atm the surface area of your head is 100 square centimeter what is the approximate force acting on your head think about it very interesting question 1 atm pressure acts on your head how much is the approximate force by the atmospheric pressure yes prince i know it's dangerous do not try this at home probably i should have put a warning out there so yes kids yes minions please don't try whatever i showed you just sometime back at home sort of peace pressure no problem so my jb batch students are also here interesting very good very good hello vk channel join in join in come on lot of people are saying a some people are saying b all right come on decide on the answer jumna is saying a 17s saying a all right so let's see the final answer guys dinesh saying d okay so guys the final answer is actually b now let me tell you why it is b let's check this out see the area is 100 square centimeters so this area is 100 square centimeters or centimeter square now centimeter square you can write it as 10 to the power minus 4 meter square let's do it in si units very important 100 centimeter square into 10 to the power minus 4 that will convert it into meter square so it will become 10 to the power minus 2 meter square now what is the pressure the pressure acting on it is 1 atm so think about it that force will be Remember, one atm is approximately 10 to the power five pascals. Approximately, so force is pressure multiplied by area, which is 10 to the power minus two meter square. How much will it be approximately? Think about it. It will become 10 to the power three newtons. So, which is nothing but option B, thousand newtons. So, a force of thousand newtons will act if your head is. 10 cm by 10 cm which is roughly this much so if this is the size of your head then the force acting on your head will be around 1000 newtons yes many of you made some silly mistake amarnath welcome diya welcome join and join and join in so you know how it feels like so let me tell you how it feels like guys just one second yeah so it feels something like this imagine this is that pandu whose cute little head is around 10 cm square then a force of 1000 newtons is nothing but like the weight of a 100 kg mass on his head yes the weight of 100 kg mass on pandu's head is like 1000 newton force now that's quite a lot but you will never feel it 
Why don't you feel it? Because you are used to it. You have evolved accordingly. Right from birth, even your forefathers and forefathers, so right from the time you are apes and humans have evolved. In fact, all the species around us have evolved accordingly and you are used to it. So that's why you do not feel it. Understand there is always that force by the atmosphere on you, but you never feel it. It's always there. I hope that's clear. Yes. Poor Pandu. Yes, Princey, don't worry. I'm not troubling Pandu. He's used to it. Just like you, he's also used to it. Okay. So let's get going. <laughs> yes, yes, the Champa will cry. All right, all right. So let's get going, guys. Let's get going to the next question. Now, before that, let me tell you this concept of hydrostatic pressure. This diagram was very important, guys, by the way. You would have got an idea that atmosphere exerts pressure on everything on you and everything around you as well. So this is the concept of hydrostatic pressure. Understand when you are standing on earth, okay, you are standing on earth, there is a big column of air which extends till ionosphere which is over you always. You cannot escape it unless you leave the earth. But that's not possible unless you become an astronaut. So there is always this big column of air. You'll be like, sir, it's air. It's so light. What will it do? But think about it. That column's length is close to some 300, 400 kilometers. Because that's the length till which our atmosphere extends. So that much column's weight is always over you. That creates that notion of hydrostatic pressure. So how much is the weight of that column approximately? Here is the answer. See, think about it, guys. Think about it. The pressure acting generally on you is around 1 atm, which is approximately 10 to the power 5 pascals. This 10 to the power 5 pascals can be approximately written down as, you know, if you write it like this, it will become 10 to the power 5 newtons. Okay, so 10 to the power 5 newtons upon 1 meter square. So if you take a column of size 1 meter by 1 meter, so imagine that huge column and that column extends till the ionosphere, the weight inside that column will be 10 to the power 5 newtons, which is 10 to the power 4 kgs. Because newtons is force, kg is mass, so into g, will give you Newton. So 10 to the power 4 kg, 10,000 kg. So 10,000 kg of air is approximately over you till the atmosphere ends. Are you able to visualize this? Are you able to visualize this? Everyone? Everyone, are you able to visualize this guys? Let me know in the chat box. Okay, so let's get going then. Excellent. Okay, so now hydraulic and hydrostatic pressure. Hydraulic is because when the, uh, uh, you know those pistons and cylinders are there, so when you pressurize it because of some external force, that is that hydraulic pressure. Amazing, amazing, amazing. VK channel, Varsha, Diya, Science, Priya, Arthi. Very good, very good, Uncharted. Okay, now as you change your altitude, what happens is the amount of air which is above you is different. So if you are on earth, the column's height is more. So you will be balancing a lot of weight. So that's why your pressure is more at the bottom. But as you go on the top, the amount of air above you is very less. So this much amount of pressure or this much amount of weight's pressure acts on you. So the deeper you go, you will see the pressure increases. The higher you go, the pressure decreases. This is very important concept to make you visualize that how you know at different heights the pressure changes very very important now this is the reason why your nose bleeds at high altitudes because when you are at high altitudes what happens the pressure reduces now your body is usually accustomed for one atm pressure from outside but when the pressure outside decreases so the blood vessels still have that much pressure so the walls the blood vessels etc they burst open at the weakest points the weakest points are generally the nose the ears and the eyes so 
generally you will see your nose or ears will start bleeding at very very high altitudes that's the reason for that okay i hope this is very very clear now having said that since we have just understood that at different heights the pressure changes what is the rate at which the pressure changes that is called as the pressure gradient so very very important formula coming up on your screen so it is nothing but how pressure changes with distance in this case that distance is basically the height so how does pressure change with height so like for example you are at sea level the atmospheric pressure is 1 atm but if you go deep inside water the pressure due to the water builds up and the pressure keeps on increasing so there is a change in pressure with depth or height so that is called as pressure gradient and the symbol for that will be dp by dy what is this dy this dy is nothing but change in height this dp is nothing but change in pressure so rate of change of pressure with respect to height is called as pressure gradient that's what it means so very very important now let's see what is that formula so the formula goes like this so if you take the y axis as vertical and let's say there are two points which are separated by a distance of dy then the pressure gradient which is just given by dp by dy is equal to rho into g with a negative symbol now you will be like sir why is there a minus symbol and what do these things stand for this rho is nothing but the density of fluid and that g is standard that is acceleration due to gravity now if you change the liquid the rate at which pressure changes will also be different if g changes then also the rate at which pressure changes will also be different what is this minus sign this minus sign says if you go up then pressure decreases if dy is positive if you go up then the pressure will decrease that is why that minus sign is there so think about it if i tell you over here the pressure is example say for example 2 units and over here the pressure is 1.8 uh, units example so let's say this is 2 pascals and this is 1.8 pascal and you have gone up by 0.1 meter then the pressure gradient dp by dy will be how much did the pressure change by think about it it changed by 0.2 when i went up so actually it is minus 0.2 so it changed by minus 0.2 and uh, for what height did it change it changed for think about it 0.1 meters so the pressure gradient will be minus 2 pascals per meter so whenever you go 1 meter up the pressure reduces by 2 pascals that's what it means is that clear is that clear very very important did you understand this this problem has come in j advanced as well they had given density as a function of y and they had asked how does pressure change okay very very important formula pressure gradient formula remember this not many books or not many places this formula has been discussed if you move down then dy will be negative dp will be positive understand so either ways you will get a minus sign okay now another important point that i want to mention over here is all those points with the same pressure value let's say these are all the points with same pressure p1 these are all the points with same pressure let's say p2 then these lines are called as isobars what are these called as they are called as isobars isobars are the collection or the locus of all those points which have the same pressure very very important so at the sea level you can see this is an isobar this line over here is an isobar this line will be an isobar 
another this line will be an isobar. So all those points at the same pressure are called as isobars. Very, very important formula and very, very important concept. Another important thing, let me tell you guys, if the isobars are like this, the gravity at that place is always perpendicular to the isobar. Remember that. The gravity is always perpendicular to the isobar and the gravity always points towards a higher pressure. So P1 will be more than P2 and whichever is the direction of gravity, that's where the pressure increases. Very, very important pointers. So write down all these things. Gravity, acceleration due to gravity is perpendicular to isobars and gravity always points in the higher direction of pressure. Very, very important. Okay, excellent VK channel. You have written it down in the notes. Okay, so now using this formula, you can actually find the pressure at any depth or any height above any level. So let's say on the surface, the pressure is something and I want to find the pressure below and I want to find the pressure on the top. So the formula goes like this guys. Say for example, on the surface of any fluid, the pressure is P0. So this is the pressure at the surface. Generally, it is nothing but atmospheric pressure. And atmospheric pressure, I have already told you, it is around 1 atm. Now, like I said, if you go below like this by a depth of h, then the pressure at this point will be given by P0 plus rho g h. Very important formula. So pressure at some depth h is given by P0. P0 is the pressure at this point plus density of the liquid into gravity into height. So deeper you go, the pressure at this point will keep increasing. More the gravity, more is the change in the pressure. More the dense the fluid is, more is the pressure at the bottom. So that's why rho g h. Similarly, if you go up, if you go up by a height h, then the pressure at this point is given by P0, but this time minus rho g h. That is the value of the pressure at height h. But be very careful, this rho is the density of air, guys. Because you are going up in air. A lot of people make a mistake over here. But over here, this density is the density of that liquid out there. Very important formula. So the pressure below is P0 plus rho g h. Rho is the density of this liquid. And when you go up, then it is P0 minus rho g h, where that rho is the density of air over there. Very, very important. Is everybody understanding this? Let me know guys. Everybody understanding this point till here? Everybody has made notes. Everybody has written down the formulas. Any doubt? I hope everything is clear. So sort of the pressure will be high as you go deeper and deeper. Okay. Very important. As you go deeper and deeper. Okay. So now... Yes, you can take P0 as 1 atm unless specified otherwise. Yes, Kirito, you can do that. Can we neglect the density of air? Well, depends on the problem VSG. Just check the options. And if the answer is in points, then most likely you shouldn't neglect the density of air But uh, as you go up. But if the answer uh, does not have any decimal values, etc., then you should probably ignore. See, the density of air is roughly 1.28 SI units. So in case you want to know that, the density of air is roughly at STP, it's 1.28 kg per meter cube. Now, if you compare it with the density of water, water's density is 1000. That's very high as compared to the density of air. Remember that 1.28 kg per meter cube. That's at standard pressures and temperatures. Okay, now, okay, let's do a question. So there is a Pandu who is at a depth of 5 meters, I want to find what is the pressure at point A or that at that depth, particular depth. So, imagine if you are at a depth of 5 meters, the pressure at that point will be P0 plus rho GH. So, P0 is nothing but 10 to the power 5 
density of water is 1000 into g is 10 and height is nothing but 5 meters. So do this math, it will be 10 to the power 5 plus 10 to the power 5 plus 1000 into 10 is 10,000, 10,000 into 5 is 50,000. So I can just write it as 5 into 10 to the power 4. You can also write it as 10 to the power 5 plus 0.5 into 10 to the power 5 which will make it 1.5 into 10 to the power 5 pascals which you can also write it as 1.5 atm approximately approximately it's 1.5 atm very important so if it is in pascals check the option then it will be 1.5 into 10 to the power 5 but if it is in atm then it will be 1.5 atm now let me give you a small hint guys here is the thing, remember this value and this will save you a lot of time. You can avoid all these calculations. Listen to me carefully. 10 meters depth in water is approximately, think about it, 1 atm extra pressure. Remember that. 10 meters inside water is 1 atm approximately extra pressure. So if you are 5 meters inside water, how much extra pressure? 0.5 atm. So what should be the pressure here? 1.5. Why 1.5? Because 1 atm is already there at the surface. Understood? Chalo, let's do this again. If you are 40 meters inside water, if you are 40 meters inside water, what is the total pressure? Well, for every 10 meters, the pressure by water is 1 atm. So for 40 meters, 4 atm pressures just because of water plus that extra 1 atm because of atmosphere so totally 5 atms of pressure correct remember that 4 plus 1 so this is going to save you a lot of time in the examination okay understood everyone lot of important tricks which are going to come up out here okay so now that you have understood this problem now that you have, yes Bhargava, I will definitely answer your doubt on Instagram, no problem. Now that you understood this, let's see how many of you can get this answer. In which container do you think the height of water when it is poured inside this container? Actually, there are two containers which are connected by a small pipe. Where do you think the water's height will be more when you fill it and leave it for some time? Where do you think the water's height will be more? Option A, option B, option C, option D. Come on guys, let me know. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, everyone, come on, check it out. Where do you think it will be more? Come on, everyone, I'm waiting for all the answers. Some people are saying C, some people are saying. Okay, most of you are saying C. Okay, very good, very good, very good. Excellent, guys, excellent. You guys are true minions, you guys are true way enthusiasts, very good. The answer is C, it will be same in both. It looks very ridiculous, now come to think of it. There is one small container and big container, but still, but still the pressure, sorry, still the height is same. Still the height is same guys. Doesn't it surprise you? The answer is same, how is it same? Guys, I'm going to give you such a brilliant explanation. Nobody gave it to me here. I am so sad about it. What to tell? Nobody gave me this explanation. I wish somebody gave me this explanation long time back. I would be so happy. I'll give you that explanation. But before that, let me tell you what is this called? This is called as hydrostatic paradox. Why paradox? Because it feels that, you know, wherever the size of the container is more, then there is more water. So because there is more water, it is going to push it down more. And in the narrow container, the water should go up. Why? Because narrow has less water. So the huge containers water will push it down and it will probably make it go up. That's what one feels. That's what one's gut feeling says. But since most of you have already seen this answer somewhere or you would have read it somewhere, that's why you know probably the answer is same. But here is the thing. Let me tell you first how it looks like. So if you start pouring water guys or some liquid, the level of the liquid in all the containers, no matter what the shape of the container is, will always remain the same. No matter what the shape, 
what the size is it will always fill up till the same height so very very important concept now will be useful for all the problems now you can see that now let me also give you what is that explanation let me give you that explanation guys you will be surprised to see what that explanation is you can see how the liquid is filling up till equal amount of heights no matter what it is now the explanation goes something like this guys okay listen to me guys very carefully very carefully imagine if i had two equal containers similar identical containers and if i if i pour water if i pour some water or some liquid don't you think the liquid that will fill in both these containers will be till the same height for obvious reasons think about it don't you think guys the liquid will fill up till the same height yes or no come on let me know yes for same size containers the liquid should fill up till the same height if they are connected yes or no come on guys let me know in the chat box come on come on come on come on come on yes binocular like container yes very good come on guys respond more now here is the thing if i connect one more container of similar kind okay one more container of similar kind what do you think will happen again the liquid that will fill up will be till the same height in that container too in that container also the liquid will fill up till the same height now i add one more container guys i add one more container identical again just like the previous ones all of them are identical so obviously in this also you will see that the liquid will fill up till the same height correct the liquid will fill up till the same height excellent now think about it if i look at all these three containers and think of it like one big container of thrice the area what does it look like it looks like you have a big container and you have a small container connected together doesn't it look like that a big container and a small container now isn't it obvious in that big container as well as on that small container the height of the liquid should be the same isn't it obvious now if you look at it this way it looks so easy so easy to explain and this is the best part about this explanation did you love this did you love this understanding and if you have loved this understanding please hit the like button out there if you have not already done that very good guys very good very good very good i hope you guys have understood this concept now let's get going to the next question now this is also a very good question this can come in various ways in je this can come in different forms in the je examination and there have been times where it has been asked in kvpy je advanced and paragraph type of questions guys let me tell you now what is this question everybody would have sipped some liquid or some juice using a straw correct now have you ever wondered what would happen if you take a long straw and try to sip it is it possible you'll be like yes sir i can take a very long straw also and still i can sip it and i will be like sir how and then you will be like sir i know what to do i will sip and i will hold it and then again i will sip and again i will hold it again i will sip again i will hold it i will take some time but it's okay i will be able to sip it you just told me to sip it somehow so i will be able to do it no matter how long the straw is even if it is 2 km long i will still do it then i will be like hold on hold on hold this cup of juice and i will tell you that it is not possible using physics using physics i'm going to tell you it is not possible to do that and i know most of you will be thinking it is impossible sir is lying sir has lied to us that i cannot sip using a 2 km long straw i feel i can do it well you feel that you can do it please go ahead and try it out you will not be able to do it and i will show it to you using physics today okay so let's try this out let's try this out now so the maximum height of a straw which can be used to sip water is how much let's calculate it there is a maximum limitation so first understand first understand that 
Why can you sip water? Lot of people feel that you can suck water. That is slightly wrong. Actually speaking, when you are sipping water, your lungs are creating low pressure in your mouth. So what is happening guys? When you sip water, your lungs etc are creating low pressure in your mouth. Now, just imagine, I'll put some values, you will understand it. See, there is atmospheric pressure, roughly 1 atm over here. That atmospheric pressure is pushing the water over here and over here. It's pushing it down like this, correct? Simultaneously, if you did not sip anything, the water level in the straw will be just still here. It won't go up if you didn't do anything. If the straw is just lying there ideal, right? Then what will happen? The straw will just be there. The liquid will not, neither go up nor it will come down. So it will just be lying there. Now the moment you sip it, the moment you sip it, what is going to happen? You are creating a low pressure. Let's say 0.8 atm. So if you create 0.8 atm, what do you think will happen guys? At this point, there is low pressure because your lungs have created that low pressure. Here 1 atm pressure is going to force this water down and it is going to be forced inside this tube because there is low pressure here. Before this, the 1 atm pressure was also pushing that part of the liquid inside the straw as much as that liquid which was outside it. So everywhere there was 1 atm pressure before you sipped it. The moment you sip, that low pressure is not applying that much force down. The force from here is more and that is how much? 1 atm. So that is why the liquid will gush through it. Is that understood? Yes. It's not capillary. Capillary is different. That is because of surface tension. This is not called capillary mechanism. Capillary is completely different. Okay, be careful. Now, what is the lowest pressure you can create, guys? Think about it. What is the lowest pressure you can create using your mouth? Imagine you have the most powerful lungs. Best lungs in the world. Superhuman you are. Even a superhuman lung cannot produce any pressure which is less than 0 atm. Correct? Nothing less than 0 atm. I hope this is clear. Now, atmospheric pressure is almost 10 to the power 5 Pascal, which is roughly 1 atm. Now, you are going to see the best thing in the world and your eyes will be opened and you will be like, Sir, I did not know this. I thought it was the other way around. You will thank me for this. Just give me one minute. Now, here is the thing, guys. When the liquid goes up, okay, the pressure here and pressure here should be same. Because remember the size, shape of the container does not matter. Only the depth of the liquid matters. So pressure at this point, this point should be same. And at this point, the pressure is how much? 0 atm. Because you have created that 0 atm pressure. Then you'll be like, sir, why is the pressure at B not 0 atm? Reason? There is liquid filled inside the straw. So because of that liquid, at that point B, the pressure will be 0 plus rho g h. What is h? h is this height. So it is 0 plus rho g h. Think about it. The pressure at point B is the pressure at this point plus rho g this much height. Hydrostatic pressures concept. That's it. Now, the pressure at this point and this point should be same because if it is not same, then you know there will be an unbalance which will be created. So, the pressure at point B should be equal to pressure at point A. But I know the pressure at point A is nothing but 10 to the power 5 Pascal. Rho is 10 to the power 3. G is 10. H is, I don't know. So, cancel things off and you will get height as approximately 10 meters. You are getting the height as approximately 10 meters. Guys, yes, yeah, 0 atm means the lowest vacuum. You have created vacuum out there. You cannot have negative pressure for sure. So that's the lowest pressure. Now, what does this tell you guys? How much is 10 meters? 10 meters is hardly a two-storied building. Less than that probably. That's it. That's the maximum amount of height that you can have for a straw. Anything more than that, you cannot pull it. You cannot pull it. That's it. That's very less. In fact, human lungs are not even capable of creating 0 atm. You can try it out. It will not even go till 10, 10 meters, it will go less than 10 meters, probably 8, 
five or six meters. That's it. Very less than 10 meters. Now my point is who actually pulled that water or pushed that water? Who has actually pushed that water up in the straw? Is it you or is it somebody else? If the answer is you, that is wrong. Actually, the atmosphere has pushed the water up in your mouth. If there was no atmosphere, you can never sip a juice out of a container. Believe me. You can have the most powerful lungs in the world, but if there was no atmospheric pressure, you cannot sip it because there will be nothing to push it. Very, very important. Yes, Kirito, you can challenge your friends and you can, you know what, you can have a challenge between all of your friends who can sip till the highest amount and whosoever can sip till the highest amount will be the winner. You can do a competition as well. So very important thing, actually the atmosphere pushes the liquid and that liquid gushes through the straw and into your mouth. So you are not actually pushing that liquid. You are just creating low pressure and that liquid automatically comes up because of the atmosphere. Very important concept. Sudarshan, please post, post. Yes, you should probably pray to atmospheric pressure because because of that, you are able to drink amazing yummy juices and cold coffees. All right, all right. Excellent, hey guys. Saurav has already challenged Krito. Wow. What is my name? My name is Sheila, Sheila ki Javani. <laughs> Sudarshan, my name is uh, Shreyas. <laughs> okay, Kirito has already accepted. Okay, chalo guys, let's get going to the next concept. And before that, let me also tell you about the subscription course, guys. So the subscription course where you can interact and you can participate with the in the quizzes, you can talk to you know uh, doubt experts where you can also interact with teachers and your fellow classmates and uh, and and guys you will get amazing test series assignments and daily assignments along with that the tatwa booklet and there are thousands of micro courses where thousands of teachers have been teaching in very amazing ways and different ways and all this comes at free of cost once you're in the subscription along with your regular batches. So you have a regular batch and you have micro courses, you have test series, you have doubts, you have continuous assessment uh, after test, test discussions, sab kuch milta, everything that you would want from a coaching at one place. Also you get trained for KVPI boards, everything. And guess what the prices are guys? Prices are very, very nominal. If you check the six month price, for 11 standard students, it's 24,000 only, but we still give you 20% off and the prices go down to even less value, 19,200 for six months. That comes out to around 107 rupees per day. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yes. So basically guys, it's hardly anything. It's just like eating, uh, eating, uh, a half happy meal at McDonald's. How much does a McDonald's burger meal cost guys? I think it is around 230 or 240 rupees. I just recently had it. So you probably take half meal a day and that's the per day price. It's so cheap, less than half a meal. You have meal thrice a day guys. I hope you are humans and you have meals three times a day. So bahut hi sasta, bahut hi I would say very affordable course and how do you get this 20% off? Very simple, go to the description box, there is a link and once you click on the link, check out all the details before signing and then do not forget to hit this particular coupon code, copy this coupon code SHHPRO, SHHPRO. That's the coupon code, only then you will get the discount coupon. And guess what, you can also share this coupon code with your friends who would be interested to join in Vedantu and you can then probably ask for a treat because you gave them 20% off. All right. So Sudarshan, this coupon code is when you enter uh, this coupon code in that link, then you get 20% off or else you'll have to pay, pay the full price. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's get going. Let's get going. 
Now, the next concept that is coming up, let's see. Uh, three containers with equal base area are filled with a liquid. Compare the pressures just above the bottom surface of the container. Come on guys. Where do you think the pressure is more? Where do you think the pressure is less? Very simple question. Thank you, Frederick. Hello, Richu. Join in. Hello, Fida. Long time. <clears throat> uh, VJ Enthuse admin, please unblock Prince Kapoor because she is our regular student. Okay, same. Ankit says two has highest pressure. VSG says one. Science Priya says equal. Kirito says one. Ranjit says second. Okay, so here is the answer, guys. If you check these diagrams, you will quickly understand that the liquid is filled uh, till equal heights. Okay, the bases, base area are equal and the heights are also equal. Okay, it's not mentioned, but it is, I think, obvious in this question that the heights are equal. So, if the heights are equal, guys, what will be the pressure at this point, at this point, and at this point? Will it be more, less, equal to? Think about it. All these pressures will be equal to each other because all these pressures will be P0 plus rho GH. H is same for all. Rho is also same for all. Like, sir, why same? Because the same liquid has been filled. The same liquid has been filled. That's why the answer is same. Very important. Lot of people feel that, sir, this is big container, so more pressure. No, 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 no. It's still the same. Less area. No, no, no. It's still the same. Pressure only depends on depth. Remember that. Okay. Now, the force will be having some different criteria. Now, the next question is exactly on that. So, I've just changed the question a little bit. Three containers. The container's mass is negligible. Base area is same. Height is same. Are filled with the same liquid. Compare the force by the liquid on the base of the container and compare the force by the container on the surface on which it has been kept. Now, there are two different questions. Let me see who can give the answers. Both the answers in one shot. Come on. Uh, density is the density of the liquid harni, not the density of the container or the entire thing. So, even if you check the, on that big container, the density will still be the same because the mass will be more. Think about it. Volume will be more, mass will also be more. So, that's why density is the density of that liquid. It will be same for all of them. Come on, guys. Think about the forces. There are two questions. Ankit says both the answers are equal and equal. Yes, uh, Harni, the thing is, rho is the density of liquid. So it won't depend on the area. Even if you take a big container, what will happen? More mass will be there. So bigger the area, bigger the container, uh, bigger the mass. So proportionately, density will also be the same. Understand. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's have a look. Chalo. Now, let me tell you guys, what is the answer for these questions? Now, let me tell you, many people get this wrong. Even 12th standard repeater students get this wrong. So, pay attention. The pressure at all these three points was same. So, P1 was equal to P2 is equal to P3. Let's say I call it P. Correct? It was the same. We just calculated it. Now, the area, base area is also same given with equal base area. So, what is F1? F1 will be P1 into A. F2 will be P2 into A. And F3 will be P3 into A. But since the pressures are same, what will you get? F1 is equal to F2 is equal to F3. So, the first part, compare the force by the liquid on the base. By the liquid on the base, these forces on all the three containers are the same. Remember that. Very, very important. The base areas are same. The forces are also the same. Very important. 
uh, don't go by looks the base area is same it might look like this is bigger actually this should have been drawn little smaller and this will come even narrower but don't go by looks if it is mentioned kirito in the question that the area is same even if in the diagram it looks different you have to assume that the areas are same remember that never go by looks even in life okay chalo got it got it yes looks are deceptive correct now the second part of the question guys compare the force by the container on the surface now this is slightly different sudarshan i have already done rotational mechanics you can check the playlist i just completed it last week yaar sudarshan please go ahead and check it out in the playlist now you will be able to see everything now this answer is slightly different the container on the base will apply a different force only you will like sir why guys think about it the liquid is not just applying pressure here but it is also applying pressure on the side walls correct on the side walls also it is applying pressure ka force now think about it this liquid on this side wall will be applying force at an angle right it will be applying force at an angle now think about it because of this angle what will happen to the resultant force down what will happen to the resultant force i think it will be slightly more just concentrate on the liquid what is that liquid doing on the container it is pushing the container everywhere wherever it gets it is pushing it in the first case it was pushing it sideways and it was pushing it down so this green force which i am showing is only because of these red arrow marks downwards but in this case this green arrow mark is not only because of this red arrow marks but also component of these slanting red arrow marks like this so component is also pushing it down because the force of the liquid which will be push pushing the container that container will eventually push that ground very important now in this situation think about it these forces are going to be slightly upwards are going to be slightly upwards so what will happen to the net force by the liquid on that container it will be slightly less are you able to see that guys that force will be slightly less because the net force by the liquid on the entire container will be slightly nullified by the upward component of these slanting forces so that is why two will be highest then one and then three three will be lowest one uh, one will be medium two will be highest very important so understand the difference between the two yes is it clear everyone is it clear yes correct ranjit very important question lot of people get this wrong so read the question carefully in the exam because in the exam what will happen guys you know what happens in mendic quiz also you have seen in the in a hurry you just skip the main words or your brain perceives the question only in a different way and you mark a wrong answer so very important to read the question carefully always be patient be calm be composed be cool in life only then you can handle pressure because a lot of students ask me sir in the exam i can solve i sorry i can't solve the questions but at home i can solve because very simple fact guys you are not able to handle pressure so that is what we are doing today pressure okay chalo next question now before that let me tell you what a barometer is yes you got pressure uh so gagan remember my in the start of the lecture today gagan i told you pressure force is always perpendicular to the area so if the containers uh, walls are vertical then the forces will be horizontal if the containers walls are slanting then the force will also be at an angle that's all okay gagan no problem fida watch it watch it later on okay hi rohan i know you i know you okay nice nice you're calling me thalaiwa yaar okay okay thank you thank you all right so now what is a barometer barometer is a device used to measure atmospheric pressure so what happens guys let me tell you in a barometer you have an inverted tube which is dipped in a container so an inverted tube which is dipped inside a container and if that tube okay which is filled with water or liquid it's if it is dipped in a pool of liquid and if you open this wall you will see you will see that the atmospheric pressure outside 
will gush in will gush in and it will change the height of the liquid inside that test tube i'll repeat so when you invert a tube inside a liquid what you will see is that liquid will flow in and out depending on where the pressure is more and eventually you will see some gap over here there will be some amount of liquid filled inside and that amount of liquid depends on how much is the atmospheric pressure if the atmospheric pressure is more then more liquid will enter the test tube if atmospheric pressure is less then less amount of uh, 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 sorry if atmospheric pressure is less then what will happen uh, this height will come down and this level will go up that's what happens so this is nothing but a barometer okay i hope this is very very clear now let's find out the formula it's very simple so this is the construction of a barometer the atmospheric pressure pushes the liquid like this do you remember that straw wala problem which i just gave you some time back the atmospheric pressure was pushing the liquid and it was entering a straw it is very similar to that and there is vacuum over here don't you see the similarities in this diagram it's very very similar why is there vacuum here because there are no bubbles which are formed and that is very important when you construct a barometer that you never allow any bubbles to be formed here because if bubbles are formed and if they enter over here then the pressure over here won't be 0 atm it will be some 0 0.1 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 atm so it's very important that bubbles should not enter this empty space very very important now if there is vacuum here and you have prevented the bubbles from being formed here is the logic of finding the pressure here the pressure is p not here the pressure is zero because it is vacuum and here at this point let's say i call it a the pressure at point a is p not or zero plus this much water columns uh, pressure which is rho gh but remember in hydrostatic paradox what did i tell you inside a liquid at same height inside a liquid at same height the pressures are equal so at point a the pressure should be exactly equal to p not therefore p not will be equal to rho g h very important so barometric pressure is rho g h as simple as that if you know h you can find p not this is how you do it now if you substitute density of mercury which is 13.6 into 10 to the power 3 kg per meter cube if you substitute g as 9.8 meters per second square and if you substitute p naught as approximately 1.013 or something like that into 10 to the power 5 pascal then the height that you get is 0.76 meters which is 76 centimeters remember that right so 76 centimeters of hg remember that pressure unit that you would have learnt in chemistry comes from this calculation so when pressure is atmospheric pressure rho is density of mercury g is acceleration due to gravity 9.8 h comes out to be 0.76 meters or 76 centimeters understood guys understood so remember this formula is completely dependent on the vacuum being present here if there is no vacuum here this won't be zero this won't be zero if this is not zero there will be a term here which we don't know so that might definitely give us a wrong answer uh uncharted don't worry capillary action will come later on i will be dealing with capillary action after some time but understand capillary action is completely different this is coming because of atmosphere atmosphere is forcing this liquid inside not that capillary action capillary action is completely different chapter surface tension that is Yes, that's why we assume it is 76 centimeters. So VK channel next mentee will come on Thursday. It will be on current electricity. Okay, let's see if you can understand the next concept, which is called as a manometer. So guys, what is a manometer? Manometer is used to measure the difference of the pressure, guys. As simple as that. Think about it. If the pressures are equal, manometer is nothing but a U tube, a U shaped tube. Okay, we are right now on YouTube, by the way. So if you have a U shaped tube. You pour liquid, the liquid in both the sides will be same. But if on one side you have low pressure or high pressure, then one side will go down, other side will go up. So lower the pressure, it will be pulled up. 
if the pressure is high then it will push the liquid down and the other side will go up and that pressure difference will be exactly given by uh, you know how much high the liquid has gone up on the other side so that is the basic functioning of a manometer so if you look at a u-shaped tube and if you see one side has been gone down and one side has come up then what it means guys is this understand here imagine a balloon and here also you can imagine a balloon let's say here the pressure is p1 and here the pressure is p2 p1's pressure is more so it has pushed the liquid down p2's pressure is less so it's not able to push the liquid down so much so it has come up now think and tell me where and all the pressures can be equated where and all do you think the pressures if vacuum is there then it will go up as much as possible if it's water it will go up by a height of 10 meters sir we have just calculated it okay now think about it is the pressure at c and d equal is the pressure at a and d equal or is the pressure at e and f equal where do you think the pressures are equal guys Boyle's law is for gases VK channel this is liquids be careful okay where do you think the pressures are equal is it d and a is it c and b is it e and f where do you think the pressures are equal guys come on let me know same horizontal level only e and f c and a think again e f let me tell you guys b and c okay here is the answer the pressure at point d and pressure at point A are definitely not equal but the pressure at point C and the pressure at point B are equal the pressure at point E and pressure at point F are also equal because they are at the same horizontal level now you'll be like sir even D and A are at the same horizontal level why aren't the pressures equal guys check the liquid is the liquid here and here same no this is in liquid some water or something this is in some other gas so that's why the pressure is not same so pressure at same depth or height is same inside the same liquid so the trick is always go from bottom to the top this is the trick to solve manometer questions start from bottom obviously the pressure should be equal here why should they be equal because if it is not equal the liquid will start flowing e to f or f to e so obviously pressure should be equal so if at these two points the pressure is equal at these two points also the pressure is equal why because you are going up in the same liquid now when you go up you are going in two different liquids so that's why the pressures are not same at d and a very important yes but if i ask you is the pressure at d and c equal then what will your answer be guys at d and c what do you think is it equal or not equal at d and c I feel they will be approximately equal because it's air it's gas so in gases the pressure does not change this is approximate because in a gas variation is very very less very very important so that's why the pressure at C and D will be approximately same and how much will that pressure be at C and D that will be P1 and what will be the pressure at point A? That will be nothing but P2. Okay, very important. Now, these are approximately equal, by the way, let me tell you. Last thing, what is the pressure difference? Very simple. At C and B, think about it. I just said, using this concept, at C and B, the pressures are equal. What is the pressure at C? same as d which is equal to p1 what is the pressure at point b it will be p2 plus rho gh so taking the difference p1 minus p2 is equal to rho gh nobody will explain you manometer in so much of detail they will just give you this equation they won't tell you all these things and that's why you will get less marks in the actual examination C and E will not be the same because this is actual good liquid with high density. So that's why C and E will not be same. But D and C will be same because it's in air. 
approximately it will be equal. That's why I put this symbol approximate. Very, very important. So this is approximate for all calculation purposes. B and C are equal because they are in the same liquid. Check it out, Saurav. They are in the same liquid. So you started from E and F. That's what the trick. What did the what was the trick I told you? Start from the lowermost point. At E and F they are equal, correct? Because the liquid will flow otherwise. So if you go up in the same liquid, what will happen? The pressures at the same height should be same. After this point, differences will start. Yes, obviously, VK channel, this is important formula. I hope Kirito, now this is understood. But at B, depth varies. Yeah, but B, you go from F to B. Don't come from the top. From, if you come from the top, you'll obviously get confused. Thank you, Advait. Yes, the trick is, nobody tells you this trick. Always go from the bottom, guys. Always go from the bottom. And this is the level of understanding required for manometer. If you do not know this, you cannot solve manometer problems which will come in the advanced or the neat examination. Remember that. Or even in bits. This is very important. Yes, P1 minus P2 is also same as delta P. Sometimes it is also called as the gauge pressure or the difference in the pressure from the atmospheric pressure. So you can see that in the books that is mentioned. So this is a difference in the pressure in the gases on the top. Yes, obviously Dinesh, P1 has to be more than P2. That's why the liquid has gone down and that liquid has come up. Correct. Yes. Okay, let's do some questions, guys. Guys, I hope... P1 minus P2 is delta P. Yes, Barney, I just told it. Guys, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to spend more 15 minutes to 20 minutes out here. I hope you really don't mind because I'm going to probably extend the class. Uh, or Basically, we do not have a deadline as such. We never mention that we are going to conduct the class only for one hour or anything. So we are just going to go with the flow. All right. Okay. So let's get going. Let's see if we can get this answer. A lift is maintained at one ATM pressure and a barometer is inside that lift. Now, if the lift starts accelerating up, the reading shown will be more than 76, less than 76 or equal to 76. More than 76, less than 76 or equal to 76. Come on, guys. What do you guys say? Quickly answer. What do you guys think? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, some of you say B, some of you say A, some of you say equal, matlab C. Don't worry VK, but we are all united with one common goal out here that we have to crack J. That's it. Okay, so let me tell you the correct answer. Okay, many of you are saying A. Yes. The correct answer, guys, is option B, which very few people said. I think Jumna said, Aarti said, and I think Advait also said that. Yes, Ranjit, yes. Why is it less than G? Let me, uh, why is it less than 76? Here is the answer. It's clearly mentioned that the chamber is maintained at 1 atm. Now, the formula for barometer, what was it? Rho G H. This is always one ATM. It's mentioned clearly in the question. Now, when the lift goes up, what will happen inside the lift? Everything will be pressurized down. So, the effective gravity or the perceived gravity will be G plus A. Remember that. You're going up. So, everything will come down. So, it will be G plus A. That is the perceived or the effective gravity. So, this G will now become G plus A. Now, if it becomes G plus A, what will happen to the height? It has to obviously become less because the product has to stay constant. So, it will be less than 76 centimeters. Yes, understood? Yes, very important concept. So, let's go to the next question. A student accidentally tilts the barometer by a small angle in a room which has exactly one ATM pressure. The reading measured by that student will be more than, less than or equal to 76. Come on, think about it. Uh, 
uh, Gagan, actually, Gag uh, the thing is, gravity generally in for JE coaching is taught along with the 12 standards topics. The reason is generally people find it difficult when it is taught in 11th standard. Even when I teach, I teach only very basic things for gravity, but the advanced concepts like potential, field, field lines, etc., are generally taught in 12th standard because that's when you can actually relate it with electrostatics and understand it easily. So, Gagan, just concentrate. If you are in 11, just look at the forces, Kepler's laws, and satellites. That's enough. After that, whatever field, etc., is there, you will learn it in uh, 12th standard. Don't worry. Okay? And, anyways, I'll be teaching separately for 12th standard after March or April. That separate 12th standard batch will start in YouTube. So, all those 11th standard students will be teaching throughout the year, remember that. So, do not worry about it. Yes, Chinmay, I have taken your name. Okay, a lot of you are seeing A, B and C also. So, India is a land of unity with diversity. So, here is the thing, the answer is A guys. Now, why is the answer A? Reason is, when you tilt, the height till which the liquid will go up will be the same. The height till which the liquid will go up will be the same. Just one second. That means, understand, this will be, oops, sorry, one sec. This will be 76, but this won't be. Think about it, guys. Nice triangle is formed. Look at this. A nice triangle is formed, a right angle triangle. This height of the triangle will be 76. But do you think the hypotenuse will be 76? No, right? This hypotenuse will be more than 76 centimeters. So this is what he will measure because the markings will be like this. So he will measure more than 76. It's an incorrect reading. Understood? Very important. Okay, let's get going. Next question. Oil of 800 units of density and length of 100 centimeters in a tube is present in a manometer. So it will look something like this. This is oil inside the manometer. Now, 40 centimeters of water is poured in one of the limbs as shown like this. The moment you pour water, the liquid on the other side will go up. Find the height difference between the top surfaces of the liquid as shown. Okay, so let's do this problem. It's not that difficult. That's what I want you to see. So first, let me show you the points which are at the same pressure. What was the trick I just told you? Always start with the lowermost point. So I've just shown some three uh, different horizontal lines. Now think about it. The pressure at this point and at this point will be same, correct? The pressure at this point and this point will be same. Now go up, you are going in the same yellow liquid. So the pressure at this point and the pressure at this point will be same. But the pressure over here and here won't be the same. So the pressure over here is this much, okay? The pressure over here is something. The pressure at this point will be something else only. Again, so I don't know. I can use some different symbols. Let's say the pressure over here is this. And the pressure at this point, guys, will be something else only. Understand? The pressures at these two points won't be the same. So what you do is just equate the pressures at these two points. Let's say I call it A and B. Let's say I call it A and B. And let's say I call this height and this height. I will call this height, it's actually given to me, 40 centimeters of water. That means this is 0.4 meters. This much is not given, so I'm just going to call it H. So H is the height from this point to the top surface of that oily liquid. Is that clear? Is that clear? So now, now, so basically I know some of you might say, sir, oil floats in water, but in a narrow tube, if you do not allow the oil to escape, then still water can come up on one side and oil can go up on the other side. Don't worry about it. Yes. So now just equate the pressures at point A and point B. What is the pressure at point A? 
it will be atmospheric pressure plus rho gh rho is density of water g is 10 and h is 0.4 okay that's the water part on left side on the right side what will you get you will get p naught plus density of oil which is 0.8 into 10 to the power 3 into g into h now what happens p naught and p naught gets cancelled now you can also cancel 10 to the power 3 and 10 to the power 3 g as well as g so i think i will have 0.4 is equal to 0.8 h therefore h will be equal to half which is nothing but 0.5 meters just check this out it is 0.5 meters so i think i have solved the question from here to here is 0.4 from here to here is 0.5 so how much is this this much obviously will be 0.1 meters that is the answer clear everyone sir in manometer the level of liquid are in equilibrium yes shivam remember the chapter's name is hydrostatics means liquid is stationary means everything is in equilibrium isn't it simple with my trick always go from bottom to the top and see if you are going in the same liquid the moment the liquid changes you cannot equate the pressures that's what you should keep in mind and now you'll be able to solve all the problems on manometer guys okay very important now this is one problem which i want to do this is probably one of the last problems for today all right pakka clear yes amazing so 17s please can you watch the replay again because i want to do this problem now okay so this is a very important problem the force on the vertical wall of the container and the next question will be even more interesting a small modification so imagine there is a vertical wall i want to find what is the force acting on the vertical wall now first of all understand the pressure at every point is different if you go below the pressure increases so the forces acting on the vertical wall at different heights will be different so you cannot just say pressure into area because which pressure will you take which pressure will you take right so what you need to do integrate yes guys integrate so let me tell you why integration so here is the logic guys imagine imagine if i show it to you in 3d maybe i should take my other board that will be better oops okay so now here is the thing guys this is our container something like this this is the 3d view okay and let's say the height is h the base is b this is that base b and that height h is that complete height everyone clear till here now imagine if i take a small strip let me show you that let me take a small strip somewhere over here and where is that small strip that is at a depth y and why am i taking a strip because on that small strip of width dy the pressure at all these points will be the same it's a thin strip dy is like a line guys this is highly exaggerated it's like a line horizontal line at all those points the pressure will be the same think about it so hence now i can also say that the force which will act at all these points i can call it as df why df because it's the force acting on a small strip guys and the pressure at this point let's assume it to be p and that area can you guess what that area of that strip is guys 
can you guess what that area of the strip is guys think about it what is that area of the thin strip out there guys come on come on come on come on come on come on think about it what is the area it's a rectangle what is the height height is dy think about it height is dy and no no not y area of this strip guys between those two lines and what is the length it is b so won't it be b into dy think about it won't it be b into dy yes correct 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 very good so it will be b into dy so now can i say df is equal to p b dy but if i'm only interested in the pressure due to water only not because of atmosphere only because of water so this p shouldn't it be rho g h h is y think about it there is no p naught here why is there no p naught guys think about it because the question demands to find the pressure only because of water not because of atmosphere just think about it when the container was container was empty the atmosphere would still be exerting some force so why should you count it you should count only that extra force when the water is coming in remember that yes understood now if you have understood it till here this is df this will be rho g b y dy now this form it is having a special name in mathematics let me not scare you by telling that name it is called as integrable form but in physics we are going to call it sundar form or i can call it beautiful form okay so this is called as a beautiful form why beautiful form because you can easily integrate it so you are going to get it in that beautiful form where you can just so neatly put that integration how neatly you can put that integration because all the constants just come outside just the constant gets outside and only the variables stay inside and all the variables of one type are on one side all the variables of other type are on the other side that is why it is called beautiful form or integrable form is that understood everyone amazing amazing guys so now put the limits limits aukat what is the limit of this integration so think about it when y was zero whenever you think about limits think of each variable separately when y was zero that means you have not taken into account any strip when you are at the topmost strip there is nothing the force is also zero but as y keeps going down and you take more and more and more and more strips till the time you reach at the bottom and you reach height h you would have accounted for all the forces that is force f so df's integration it will become f but first you put f then you put zero and then put minus that's limits and simple integration and here it will be rho g b and y into dy's integration guys is y square by 2 i hope you know that x dx integration is x square by 2 so it will become h square by 2 minus 0 square by 2 i am skipping a step because i am pretty sure you would know that so this will become f is equal to rho g b h square by 2 that's the final answer yes limits definite integration is what limits it's the restriction from this point to that point so when y is this f is this when y is that then f is that that's why limits understood everyone very good guys shall i do one small variation in this are you ready do you still have some energy i will do some small trick in this yes are you guys into i hope you also uh, hit that like button down there all right all right all right now you know what is the next part find the torque acting on the wall of the container about the top edge this is a proper advanced or a bits 
type of question or the most difficult question of NEET. Yes. What is the torque acting on it? About the topmost point. You'll be like, sir, what torque? What nonsense is happening? See guys, there are forces acting on it. Correct? On the vertical wall. Now, because of these forces, there will be a torque because it will try to open that vertical wall like that. Look at that. That vertical wall will try to open up like this. So that is why there is a torque about the topmost point. Is that understood? See why the torque has come. So that edge tries to open up. That's the reason why there is a torque. And how do we find that torque? Very simple guys. Again, think about it. Think about it. <clears throat> Again, that same diagram, not much of a difference actually. Not much of a difference. Here it comes. Again, what you do, add some depth. Okay, add some depth. Why? Again, you take a thickness dy and remember there was a force which was acting and that force was df now think about it guys about the topmost point about the topmost point or that edge there will be a torque because of this force there will be a torque because of this force. How much will be that torque? Because of this small force on this small strip, it will be d tau. Small force will create a small torque. Each strip will create a small torque. Each strip because it is creating a small torque, the total torque will be the addition of all these small torques. Are you guys able to understand this concept? A small, small strip small small forces at every depth the force itself is different and each force will create a torque and we are trying to find the total torque i hope this is clear so what is the d tau d tau will be distance what is the distance y into what is the force df y r cross f do not forget that r cross f r is y force is df but what is that df? We just figured it out. It was PDA, not public display of affection. Now what is pressure? Pressure is rho gy, correct? We just figured it out. And what was da? Da was this breadth b into that height dy. Remember, do not forget that b was this thing. I just told you about it. So now this is d tau. I hope everybody is understanding till here. Yes. Now bring it into Sundar form. Bring it into beautiful form guys. D tau will be rho g b y square dy. Now you can sit and integrate it. Because these things are variables. These things are variables. These things are constants. Constants have been thrown outside the integration. Uh, Saurav, you should watch the lecture which I have conducted on integration. I have told you what are limits, what is uh, uh, the meaning of integration, what is the meaning of limit, definite integration. And plus Shimon sir also just recently conducted a lecture on integration. Please watch that because that will come under the topic of basic maths and kinematics and all that. So please do that. Okay, Saurav. Now, think about it when y is 0. The torque was zero because the uppermost strip, you just started, there is no torque. Now you take one, one strip, one, one strip, one, one strip till the bottommost point. The last point is H. The total torque will be tau and do that. It will be tau minus zero is rho G B. Y squares integration guys, what will it be? H cube by three minus zero cube by three. You have to put the limits. Do not forget that. So torque will be rho g b h cube by 3. That is the final answer. Is that understood everyone? What a question this was. What a question. Lovely question. Okay. So homework question for today. Before we end the class. This is your homework question. 
Just take a screenshot. I'll just move away from the screen. Just take a screenshot, guys, quickly. This is your homework question. Let's see who will post the correct answers. I'll be checking your comments in the video. All right, all right. Okay, so do that. And where will I post the solution? In the Telegram group. So for all the 12 standard students, there is also a crash course. You can check out the details, like how many sessions, like 120 sessions, how many test series, like 10 full syllabus test series, 10 part syllabus test series, test series, then the doubt solving that you're going to get. Every detail has been mentioned in the link. And the course price has come down from 10,000 to 8,000 because there is 20% off going on because you are attending this YouTube class of mine. And only uh, using this coupon code, you can get 20% off. And the coupon code is slightly different. Remember, it is SHCC. It's different for the pro courses. It was SHHPRO for the pro. For the crash courses, it is SHCC. Use this coupon code. And Telegram group, please join it. In case you have not joined it, I'll be putting up the solutions in a day or two on the Telegram group. If you have not joined it yet, please join it. And if you have loved my lecture today, do not forget to hit that like button out there. Have you loved it? So please hit that like button. And if you're a new user out here, do not forget to hit the subscribe button out there. So this was Shreyas here, your master teacher, your favorite physics master teacher at Vedantu. And I'll see you again tomorrow where we'll be discussing flotation and I'll be giving you some very important tricks tomorrow on flotation, buoyancy and some special problems. All right. Till then, see you. Bye bye. Tada. Have a safe stay at home. Take care. Have fun. Keep coming back. Keep learning. Bye bye minions. See you tomorrow. See you again tomorrow. Bye bye.